And Heavenly Fathers, we hear your word today. Breathe new life and new hope into us. In and through your Son, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray and all God's people said. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Well, since today is the new year, it's the first Sunday in Advent, we, we lit the candle of hope. That's what the f- uh, message is going to focus on today, and I've got a, a real short Bible verse for you. I mean, you, you go to the concordance and you look up the word hope, and you're going to find it in both the Old Testament and the New. And this one is from Psalm 42, verse 5, and it's simply three words. So when you talk about, hey, what did Pastor Reckman talk about? you'll be able to say he talked about three words from Psalm 42, verse 5, and those three words are hope in God. Can you say that with me? Hope in God. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, last night, Saturday night, I said to the crowd, you know, I think what we'll do, all 25 of us that were there, the crowd, let's just kind of make this a a chapel kind of a service, and let's have it be more fun than formal. What do you like better, formal or fun? Or maybe you like both. Sometimes formal is good, sometimes informal is good, and sometimes fun is good too. So I'd like to talk about hope versus disappointment. I think there's a lot of hopelessness out there in the world today, and people are putting their hope in all the wrong places, and They're putting it in places that ultimately disappoint them. So I'd like to talk about the hope that not only disappoints, but the one that doesn't. Amen? So let's talk about that which disappoints, first of all. I mean, what do people put their hope in today? thinking that uh, if I just hope in this thing or this object or this person or this individual group organization, that things are just going to go so much better and my life is going to go so much better as well. Let's, let's talk about some of them. How about people putting their hope in celebrities? You think that's a good place to put your hope in celebrities? Well, probably not because, you know, they're just as broken and messed up as we are, aren't they? I mean, they put their pants on and other things the same way do we do, right? And although they might breathe a little bit of hope because maybe we like their music or what they stand for or, or what their status is, ultimately they're broken and flawed like we are and they're going to die just like we do too. So I don't think I'd put my hope in them. Well, <clears throat> how about we put our hope in sporting teams? How about putting your hope in your favorite team? <laughs> Okay, no, that's not going to work either, because if you look at the win-loss column, sometimes they disappoint, don't they? I was watching the Golden Knights game with my grandson Bradley. I was watching him Friday night while his parents were on a date night. He tried to out-preach me last night at the Saturday night service, by the way. He didn't win, because <laughs> mom took him in the North X. Yeah. <laughs> and the Seattle Kraken beat the Golden Knights for the very first time, right? Uh, So I'm not going to put my hope in the Golden Knights. How about you? How about, man, money? Let's put our hope in money. What do you think about that? That'll work. I mean, lots of people do that. You know, if I just have enough money in my my savings account and in my checking account, everything's going to work out and I'll be so much happier because I'm going to put my hope in the bank. Doesn't work out. I think it was Mark McGuire. Anybody know who he was, a famous baseball player back in the day? He said, you know, I know a lot of wealthy, unhappy people. Yeah, I'm not going to put my hope in money. There are a lot of people who are messed up that are wealthy. If I'm a young person, well, maybe I'll put my hope in video games, Xbox. I'll sit in front of the tube all day long and just game all day. That sounds like fun, doesn't it, you guys? I'm looking at some of our youth who like to sit in front of their YouTube and wear their thumbs out, you know, having fun and competing. And actually subscribe to a guy named, I think his name is Caleb, and uh, he's, he's a former addict. He said he used to sit in front of the TV seven or eight days, I say TV, the, the video screen, and just play video games, and he found out that he wasted about seven or eight years of his life just video gaming, you know, getting the rush, the endorphin rush, and getting as high on video games. And he said, 
I came to realize that I just wasted a lot of my time. I had to quit that stuff. And his whole website is dedicated to, you know, dealing with the addiction of gaming. Don't put your hope in gaming. It doesn't work. I know what I'll do. How about if I put my hope in my health? What do you think about that? You going to bank on your health and put your hope in your health? Well, yeah, we all kind of get sick, don't we? Get COVID once in a while. And last time I checked, there's still obituaries in the Las Vegas Review Journal, right? Well, maybe if I can't, then I'll put it in my doctor. That's what I'll do. My doctor knows everything, right? Um, <laughs> any thumbs down in the house tonight? Yeah. Well, if it's not in my doctor, how about in the meds that he prescribes for me? That's where I'll ultimately put my hope. It'll keep me alive. I'll put it in medicine. What do you think? It's not going to last forever, is it? Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. How about this? Possessions. That's what I really need to put my hope in things like cars and, and houses and golf clubs. And <laughs> I don't go... <laughs> <I'm just laughs> I mean, we all do this, don't we? We think by, you know, the possessions or, you know, that they're going to somehow breathe new hope and new life into us and everything's going to be okay if I just get that new toy. That's going to satisfy me forever. Probably not. Well, maybe, maybe I should put my hope in my investments. Don't you think? That's a good place to put your hope and your security and, and your confidence. Have you looked at your investments lately? Your stocks? Your mutual funds? I, I look at mine every day and I kind of walk away depressed, so I need to stop looking at them. Well, not money, not possessions. How about this? I'll put my hope in my boyfriend or my girlfriend or my significant other. I'll put my hope in my spouse. They'll never disappoint me. We all know that works, don't we? Yeah. Yeah, we disappoint people because we're full of it. We're full of sin. You know, we're self-centered and we're stubborn and we want control and we want things our own way and we don't like when people give us what we want or they don't give us the accolades that we think we deserve. And so even our family members are going to disappoint us. I'm not putting my ultimate hope in family members. Well, I know what I'll do. I'll put it in fitness. I'll keep myself strong, and I'll work out every day, and that's where I'll put my ultimate hope, is in staying in shape. What do you think about that? My body will never break down. <laughs> I've seen people not being able to exercise anymore. Their bodies do break down. They age. They get older. They can do it for a while, but they can't do it forever. I'm not putting my hope in fitness. And I'm running out of options here to where to put my hope, you guys. I know what I'll do. This one will work. I'll put it in the church. It's the community of saints. The church, after all, is full of saints, right? The church won't disappoint me. I don't think. Does the church ever disappoint you? If you've been here at FGS long enough, and other Christian churches, not just this one, well... I mean, if, the, if, the, if I can't put my hope in the church, I know what I'll do. I'll put my hope in the pastor. The pastor will never let me down. The pastor will never disappoint me. He'll say exactly what needs to be said at the right time in the right place. He'll call me when I need to be called. He'll text me when I need to be texted. He'll never disappoint me. Because he can read my mind. Your pastor is going to disappoint you. I wouldn't put your hope in your pastor. I wouldn't put your hope in your church or fellow members. I'm almost done. How about sports betting? I mean, it's a nationwide thing now, right? I know I can pull this one off, and if it doesn't work there, it'll work at the lottery. I'm going to put my hope in the lottery. And when I win the lottery, Pastor, I'll pay off that school building and that $2.5 million note. I'll give you everything you need, Pastor. I'm putting my hope in the lottery. What do you think? 
You know, I know a lot of lottery people who have won billions. Maybe you've read about them too. They curse the day that they won the lottery and they wish they would have torn that thing up because everybody in their family went out of control. And it cursed them more than it blessed them. Money can do that sometimes. Well, if that doesn't work, how about putting your hope in the weather? The weather will never disappoint you, right? It's not like we live in Buffalo. We live in Vegas. I'll put my hope there. Sometimes the weather works here. Sometimes it gets really windy. Well, I've got another good one. This is the best one. They'll never disappoint me, my friends. I'll put my hope in my BFF. That person will never backstab me, never talk badly about me, will always keep a confidence, and will always put the best construction on everything. You ever been burned by your BFF? Yeah, they're not perfect, are they? And neither are we. None of those things are going to satisfy, folks. None of those things are going to fulfill us because all those things are material. The only thing that's going to fulfill us, that's going to provide us with ultimate hope, is God. Psalm 42, verse 5, three words, hope in God. I like what Romans chapter 12, verse 12 says, be joyful in hope, patient in affliction. And I know some of you feel afflicted today. Some of you are hurting today, emotionally, physically, maybe even spiritually. You're in a spiral. You feel like you're going downhill. You can't you feel like you can't get out of the pit. Well, I'm here to tell you that Jesus cares for you. He loves you, and he wants to help you out of your pit, whatever your pit might be. He's the only one that you can truly depend on. He is your brother. He is your confidant. He is the ultimate promise keeper. People will come and people will go. People will break their promises, but the ultimate promise keeper is Jesus. And when he says something, you can take it to heart. You can believe it and you can bank on it. Another thing you can bank on is the B-I-B-L-E, the Word of God, the inspired Word of God, full of all of God's Christ-centered promises in both the Old Testament and the New Testament. In fact, the psalmist said in Psalm 119, verse 74, for I have put my hope in your word. Amen? And especially the word made flesh, Jesus Christ. So not only is our hope in the word, but it's in the word made flesh, the one who took on human skin for us, who became one of us and suffered and died for all of our poor, miserable sins. And as we learned in confirmation class today, sin is every thought, desire, word, and deed that is contrary, that which goes against the word of God. That is what sin is. And God has not left us without hope. We know that God will not disappoint us. He's given us a savior. He's given us a son. He's given us a way out of our sin condition. His perfect life, death, and resurrection has set us free. And John verse 8, 36 says, So if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Don't put your hope into the things of this world. The things of this world will ultimately disappoint you. Put your hope in the one whose hope is never ending. Romans 5 verse 5 says this, And hope does not disappoint us. Because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Did you know that? You have the Holy Spirit whom he has given to us. You got to hear this today, brothers and sisters in Christ. That God has poured out his love toward you. He loves you. In fact, the Bible says, I don't think we can really understand completely how long and how high and how wide and how deep God's love is for us. It's lavish. It's abundant. It's never ending. And it never disappoints. And if you're really hurting today, 
How about an acronym from Pastor B? H-O-P-E. Hold on, pain ends. Remember who's holding on to you. The one who cares for you, the one who has redeemed you, and the one who loves you. May he now and always be your hope. God bless you. Amen.